then uh, what happened was that we did a program. We had a big program in Glasgow. And this was far out because actually Prabhupada had, uh, that morning we went to the program. He hadn't eaten. He had a bit of breakfast. But what I didn't realize was I had to go early and arrange the setup. And Prabhupada came over by train. And in the train, he met this very nice Indian man. He really liked the journey. He was telling us afterwards. And anyway, what happened was, though, I don't think they brought him any prashanam. So he must have left about noontime or maybe one o'clock. So between that, right up until the evening time, he hadn't practically eaten, but he never complained once. So anyway, we got to the hall and we had this program, and it was, it was a far out program because the hall was packed. I don't know how, what, you know, in those days it was a big hall. I think there was at least, there was at least 500 people in there. There was four or 500 people, and they were like, they loved Prabhupada. Somehow the Scottish took a real liking to Prabhupada. So we had this big Vyasa sign on the, on, the, on the stage, and we had a massive kirtan. Hansa Duda was leading and everything. It was a real ecstatic kirtan. And these street urchins, they were, there was these kids that had come in off the street because we let anyone in, and they were dancing like anything, and Prabhupada was really encouraging them. There was a whole rapport going on between them and Prabhupada. And I thought that was far out because to, we, most of the time we were trying to get them out, and Prabhupada would, you could see Prabhupada didn't like that, that the devotees were trying to pull them away, so I stopped it. But... Um, Anyway, so uh, Prabhupada did this amazing lecture. It's actually, I've heard it many times since. Uh, and he lectured from the Bhagavad Gita. And um, what happened was, at the end of the lecture, so Prabhupada said, so, are there any questions? And then one guy stood up and he started to say, you know, basically what he was trying to say was that I am God. But he, first of all, he started waffling some stuff, and then he came to the point. He said, actually, he said, we're all God. And Prabhupada wasn't saying a word. Prabhupada was just letting him speak. Now, he was speaking, and the object was he, was he was in person, but he was saying, we're all God, it's all one. And then suddenly he ran out of words. And Prabhupada was just sitting there. Prabhupada looked very, very grave, but like a lion. He was just sitting there like a lion. And suddenly there was this complete silence, because the guy ran out of words. And so there was just this guy looking at Prabhupada. He was right at the front of the audience, looking straight up at Prabhupada, and Prabhupada was looking straight at him. And then Prabhupada said, you are not God. You are dog! And he said it in such an amazing way that the guy practically fell back on his seat. The Shakti, was, and the guy just fell back. And the whole audience stood up and clapped and cheered and whistled. It was like Celtic had just scored a goal in the in World Cup or something. I mean, it was an amazing reaction. Everyone just clapped and cheered and everything. And I could see, I was looking at Prabhupada, and Prabhupada actually, he was shocked at the reaction. They just all completely backed up Prabhupada. And uh, what happened was that after the program, we took Prabhupada to the back, and all we had was oranges. The feast, we were so poor that the feast was oranges. I mean, you can imagine that for the public. But even then, so we gave Prabhupada about, we gave him five oranges, and then we gave him another five. I think he ate about ten oranges. Now what happened was that when Prabhupada was leaving the hall, I can swear on this till the day I die, Prabhupada was intoxicated. He was, it was like he was, he was in complete ecstasy. He was staggering down the hall. Now, I, I was looking at Prabhupada. I was holding the door. And it was only Prabhupada and me. And his servant was coming behind. And uh, I was just looking at Prabhupada. And Prabhupada had this beam that was like incredible. He was just intoxicated. And you could tell. He was, it was like this. I've never seen Prabhupada like that before. And when Prabhupada got to the door, I was holding the door. But I was one step below him. And he just put both his hands on my head. And he started rubbing my head. And I was just standing there, and there's Prabhupada rubbing my head. And I just kind of like, I, f I couldn't believe it. I said, what is going on? And Prabhupada was rubbing my head in a very, very gentle way. He said, I am very pleased with what you have done. He said, now you've preached this Krishna conscious all over Scotland. It was just such a beautiful way. It was like, you know, Prabhupada, you know it, it's hard to explain it, because it was just one of those moments that you'll never... See you again. Another time I was uh, at Berry Place, um, before I was asked to be in charge at the manor, uh, I was for some short period um, uh, trying to organize Berry Place. At that time I was approached by a senior devotee who wanted to complain to Prabhupada about the GBC and he didn't, Shamshunda, who was Shamshunda at the time. At that time Shamshunda was obviously having spiritual difficulties and uh, at least from the external point of view he wasn't coming to Mangalati it was pretty clear he wasn't chanting his rounds 
Uh, he was out in the evenings. There were, wasn't much money, and, but he wanted to rent a car. And so he had this car and I could have, you know, the devotees were struggling to maintain themselves. And so there was some agitation at Shem Shunda's behavior. So devotees were talking, but nobody would bring it to Srila Prabhupada's attention directly. So the, a particular devotee, senior devotee at the time, approached me and said, you come to Prabhupada with me, because I, I agreed, well, Prabhupada at least should know that this is going on. If he doesn't know, how can, you know, or maybe he knows. But I, anyway, I just, I went along with it anyway. So I went in with this devotee, and actually it was Ribatananda Swami. I was his, and because I'd been his secretary or his servant, he took my support to go into Prabhupada with him. And uh, we went in and paid our obeisances, and within a minute or two, Srila Prabhupada had understood our purpose. And uh, he looked at me in disgust, actually. He was not happy that I'd come to complain. And when he realized that we were there just to complain about Shamshunda, he looked at Ribatananda and he said, tell him to leave. Oh, no, 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 sorry, excuse me. First of all, he said, he looked at me, and he said, you should not criticize the superior Vaishnavas. Then, without talking to me anymore, he looked at Ribatananda and Swami and said, you tell him to leave. So I crawled out on my stomach, practically. I, I'd gone there to complain about Shamshunda and his inappropriate behavior as the GBC and uh, not knowing anything with, about Prabhupada's relationship with Shamshunda, how I'd taken this uh, impertinent position, I realized after, uh, and gone in to complain about one of his dear disciples. And that was all Prabhupada said, do not criticize the superior Vaishnava. And then he looked at his other senior devotee and said, you tell him to leave. I'm not even going to tell him to leave. Through Jagbataka Maharaj, we'd all been invited to Srila Maharaj's mud over in Navadip. And so we all went. We thought this was part of the program, that uh, we we're going to meet some of Prabhupada's godbrothers. And um, so they had arranged a whole big program over in Srila Maharaj's mud, along with Prashadam. And there was talks by Srila Maharaj, there was talks by different of my God, you know, Sanyasi God brothers. And we were over there for a few hours, and then we all came back, and Prabhupada was actually waiting at the gate. And he called for Jai Pataka Maharaj, and he said, So, where have you all been? And Jai Pataka Maharaj said, well, We went over to Srila Maharaj's mat for a program. He said, You didn't tell me? There's no one informed Prabhupada about this program. <laughs> <laughs> Prabhupada got really upset. So he called Jabataka Maharaj up to his room and he told him, he said, this is, this is not right. He said, he said, all these local Bengalis in Nabadeep are thinking that all your foreigners have come due to the preaching effort of Sridhar Maharaj. He said, he never preached in the West. I preached in the West. You have all come because of me. But he is getting all the publicity. He said, you have to be... <laughs> Very careful how you deal with my God brothers. So they will take full advantage. They will take all the credit, but actually they don't deserve that credit. So you, in 74, he gave this warning that we shouldn't um, give the credit to his God brothers for our presence in India. <laughs> 